I'm standing on the Jericho Road, the ancient Jericho Road. Behind me in the distance is Jericho. Up ahead of me is uh, Jerusalem. This is the road that Jesus walked on his final journey to Jerusalem before he died and rose again. This is also the road he used as a setting for his famous parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan about the man going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. This man fell among thieves. Oftentimes there are problems with robbers and thieves on this road. And the Bible, Jesus says, and he was left for half dead. Now this is a very important point because had the priest and the Levite helped this man, what would have wound up happening if he had died is they would have become ritually impure. Understand the tension and the contrast. If they help him and, die, and he dies, they're impure and they can't do what God has commanded them to do in terms of being priests and Levites for a time until they can ritually purify. So you see this contrast between helping my fellow and the call of God. Of course, what kicks this off is the lawyer standing up putting Jesus to the test. What's the great commandment? What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, what's in the law? How do you read it? He says, love God, love neighbor. The reason he juxtaposes those two passages is because there are two of only three passages in the entire Old Testament that begin with the phrase, and you will love. Jesus says, you've answered right. Do this and live. The guy then says, okay, well then who is my neighbor? The genius of Jesus is told in the fact that he uses the third, and you will love, to tell the parable because it's Leviticus 19.34 and you will love the foreigner. Jesus then concludes the parable. Which of these three proved to be the neighbor? Notice the guy's question is, who is my neighbor? In other words, draw the circle. Who's inside and who's outside? Jesus obliterates the circle and says, there is no circle. You go and you be the neighbor. Why? Because the value of every human individual who has been created in the image of God I find it fascinating that this is the setting for his parable. But yet also in Jericho, as he's coming up this road, he passes by a blind man on the side of the road that cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. I wonder, would the cross have had as much value if Jesus hadn't have turned aside? Here, with all the weight of the world on his shoulders, all that the, uh, was going to happen to him in Jerusalem, what does he do? He still takes time for that individual. The man who tells us to love the one who hates us, who in a few days is going to hang on the cross and pray, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He still has time for that one individual. And that's really the message of the parable. God's concern is about the individual. You can't fulfill his call if you don't see the needs of those around you. It's really quite profound. And every time I'm here on this road, that's what I'm always thinking about.